Welcome. I'm going to start this video with a visualization exercise that is designed to sort of encourage a frame of mind around how to engage with this video. So I'm going to ask you if you're willing to close your eyes and you know, of course, you're an agent of your own destiny. So if you'd rather sort of skip that part or not engage with it as much, that is your choice. Um, so yeah, for those who are interested in this, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that you are walking along the shoreline of a beach and you're pretty close to the water but it's not quite touching you. The sand is quite soft, it is a sunny day with a few clouds in the sky, probably 70s, high 70s temperature, um, Fahrenheit. So for those who don't use Fahrenheit, imagine it's quite warm but it's not burning you. Uh, and there's a slight breeze on the air, which smells of the ocean. Uh, you can hear the sounds of some seagulls and the distant sounds of some young people playing. Uh, you've, you know, decided to walk a little ways away from where most of the people are gathered on the beach and have arrived at a somewhat isolated section of the shoreline. And the reason that you've been on this walk is because you're just reflecting about life. You needed some time to just reflect on, you know, some of your life experiences and what brought you to the point where you are today. And you're reflecting about these things. You're reflecting on how certain things seem really hard and you seem in a way stuck with some patterns that have been around for some time. And you're wondering, what can I do about this? What is there to do about this? And maybe you're feeling a little lost and you're open. You're looking for a sign, something, to give you some sense of direction. And it is as you're walking on this journey that your toe nudges against a bottle, a glass bottle. And you look down and you see that it's clear and that there's a note inside. And so you lean down and you pick up the bottle and you open it and you pull out the note. This video is that note. The note that I wrote to my younger self of things I would share if I could reach back in time and tell my younger self these things and you know, after I completed writing this letter, I tucked it into a jar and I threw it out into the ocean. And now you've found it. So, a lot of what I'll share today is about my perspectives, my experiences, things that would be helpful for me to hear. But I thought there's a lot of wisdom and a lot of value in, in it that other people might be able to access now. Whether you're you know, the age that I would have been writing to my younger self or around my age or even much older. I think this, uh, things I'm about to share are very applicable for a variety of people in a variety of life situations. So I'll invite you to stick around and uh, read this letter with me. And if you'd like, you're now welcome to open your eyes or you can keep your eyes closed for the duration of the video and just imagine you're reading on the shoreline there. Hey, my name is Renya and I'm an anarchist therapist, although I'm probably not your anarchist therapist, so please keep that in mind when you're leaving comments, which I would very much like to encourage you to do, to leave comments with your thoughts, and you can use they, them pronouns when referring to me. Enjoy the video. So the first chapter of this video is, you're not crazy, they are fucked up. And 
In this section, as well as the other sections, but in particular in this section, I'm not going to be sharing like the nitty gritty details of certain stories or things that have happened to me in my life because Frankly, I just don't feel like YouTube is the right place for me to share those things, and I might change my mind in the future. But I think what I what I want to share is deeply based in my own experiences, but I'm not telling you like all of those things because, well, I just don't know you like that. So let's begin. Uh, your family is fucked up. So um, I think like a lot of young people, I had a sense that there was something off or wrong about my family, but I didn't really have enough counterexamples to see what healthier dynamics looked like. So whatever the narrative that was told in my family was sort of what I had to accept, or I would sort of say, I know this isn't quite right, but I don't know what is right. And some of these things were like, fuzzy, strange boundaries, you know, weird or outlandish expectations, um, in certain ways, like, uh, just being pressured into being a certain way or in presenting a certain way, um, and also seeing the parts of my parents that um, they themselves did not see parts of their own intergenerational trauma and hurt that they would deny, but which it was very confusing for me to see certain things and be told that they weren't true. So I am not crazy. That really was fucked up. And now with the benefit of hindsight, I can look at the intergenerational processes of how my parents had these experiences. I can look at capitalism, patriarchy, white supremacy, all of these things and how they must have impacted my family. I can have all that context and so still say like, that was fucked up. So that's what I would tell my younger self. You're not crazy. They were fucked up. And very connected to that is your religion is fucked up. So I went to a Catholic school for much of my early life and also would sometimes go to Catholic services. And the overwhelming sense I got there was that a lot of the people in positions of authority were just total hypocrites. They would advance the teachings of Jesus or Christianity in a particular way and then turn around and say, you know, that doesn't apply to these people, or I'm going to have power over you in a way that is harmful. It's exactly what I'm describing is not to do, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Um, and for a while, I didn't question this, and I just sort of acted in the role that was expected of me. But at a certain point, I sort of saw through it, and you know, it was very frustrating because I would bring up certain things or I would ask certain questions and I would just be told essentially to, to stop asking those questions and to just do what I was told. And I had a really hard time with that. Um, I can think of one particular example where I was in my religion class and they were talking about, you know, gay people. And I said something to the effect of, you know, what is so wrong about loving someone? what is so wrong about being in a loving relationship that is with consenting people. And, you know, aren't we all made in God's image? That's something Catholics will tell you is we're made in God's image. You know, whatever that means, because I would say if, you know, gay or queer people exist, then we must be made in God's image. But they would say, well, you know, you're not going to hell because you're gay, but if you do have, if you have anal sex, like, you're going to hell. Um, so, yeah, just, just total hypocrites. And what I'll also say is that not all people who practice Catholicism or Christianity are like this. Um, Lil Bill had a great video on liberation theology that also mentions other liberatory or radical traditions in the Christian sort of scope. 
And I think it's easy to forget that the most hegemonic forms of religion are not the only forms that exist of it. That there are people who are using these teachings in the way that they can be interpreted, the most radical way they can be interpreted. And so, you know, we, you don't have to just completely reject this thing. You can choose to engage with the parts that actually are, in my opinion, the correct interpretation, which is the most radical interpretation. Um, so, yeah. Um, additionally, I would say adults in general are pretty fucked up towards young people. So many adults exist as petty tyrants desiring control and like exercising authority and just you know meaningless cruel punishments because they can and i know the reason why people do this is because they themselves feel disempowered whether or not that's true or to what extent that's true depends um but you know adults in, in many, many cases, are completely out of touch with the reality of young people, are not willing to ask questions, are not willing to listen. They just, you know, they, they just want you to do what they say. And they are totally ignorant of often what it actually means to do what they say, or how that's impacting the person who's doing those things. Often they don't even think of you as a person. To be a child, so often, is to be completely dehumanized. And so me getting this sense of like, why is it that all of the adults that I know, or most of the adults that I know, are treating me in this way? Well, you're not crazy, they are fucked up, and that is a, a function of our society, and that there's a hierarchy of adults on top of young people. This next section is on friendship, peer relationships. And so I have a few thoughts on friendship. What I would say first is that if someone is mistreating you, you don't need to spend time with them. I think I spent a lot of time with people who were mistreating me because I didn't know that like, I didn't know that that's what was happening. I didn't have people in my life who could say that that wasn't okay. I didn't feel good, but I didn't know to listen to how I was feeling and to act upon it. So what I would say is, you know, pay attention to how someone makes you feel. Pay attention to what they do when they're around you. And if they're doing things that are mistreatment of you, things like physical harm, making fun of you, not listening to you, pressuring you to do things that you don't want to do. Um, all of these things, you know, you don't have to spend time with those people unless there might be some reason you have to, such as like some uh, institutional thing is bringing you together. Like, you know, if you're in a classroom together, you can't just go to a different one. Uh, but you know, to the extent that you're choosing to spend time with friends, you don't have to spend time with the people who are mistreating you. And connected to that is you can choose to spend time with the people who are treating you well. So how to determine who are these people? Well, you can ask who is encouraging you to be yourself? Who is encouraging you to you know, connect with yourself to explore different things that you're passionate about rather than someone who's telling you who to be or what to do or all of these different things. You know, someone who makes you feel good. Choose to be around those people. And that's not to say that it's always going to be a binary of someone either is going to make you feel bad and other people are going to make you feel good, but that you can sort of just pay attention and trust your judgment around people and when interacting with people and try to lean more towards those people who you feel good to be around. Okay. The last sort of thing I'll share in this section is don't worry about romance. The reason I say this is because 
Due to my various experiences, I sought out romance as a way to fill a sense of disconnection, to fill a hole of disconnection that I felt throughout my life. And I think certain ideas like love at first sight and the idea of like a one true love very much encouraged me to look at it as a way of like using romantic love to find a savior figure who could take me away from my negative feelings about myself and the way that a lot of other relationships made me feel. So as you might imagine, that's not necessarily going to lead to a healthy, loving relationship. A lot of the time, what this sort of dynamic would lead to is a lot of sadness on my part, a lot of disconnect when I would get into these relationships with people, a lot of like playing these dynamics that we both had off of each other. And so what I would say is to focus on, as I was speaking about earlier, spending time with the people you feel good around and trusting that given enough time, given enough building of trust and intimacy, some of those relationships will also take on a romantic sensibility. That might mean a partnership, that might not, but really that sense of disconnection that you're wanting to move away from can only come from authentically relating with people. And if you're focusing on this one type of relationship as being the right way to relate with people, the right way to get rid of these feelings, you know, that is probably not gonna get you to that point. Chapter three is on self-expression. So similar to what I was talking about earlier with friendship, uh, you also don't have to do the things that you don't want to do. So a lot of people will have opinions and thoughts about what you're supposed to do and you know what makes you a this or a that kind of person. Um, you don't have to do that stuff. You, you might want to sort of assess what are the possible negative consequences if I don't do this thing that someone else wants or expects me to do. But just because there's consequences doesn't mean you have to do it or not do it, right? Like the consequence of doing or not doing a certain thing might be a little bit of teasing, maybe someone yelling at you, maybe like not being in a particular friend group, but you can sort of just assess on a case by case basis, is it worth it given that I know I don't want to do this or I know that I don't feel good about doing this. Do I want to do it anyway and then I don't deal with these consequences or do I want to choose not to do it, stay true to myself and then deal with like these consequences that might happen. Um, but you know, you don't have to do those things. People are going to judge you but um, you're not crazy, they are fucked up as, as we just went over. So these people's judgments uh, don't mean anything because they're pretty fucked up as people a lot of the time. So, you know, make those choices. And if you do want to do something, you can do the things you do want to do. And again, there might be consequences. If you're doing something that someone else is going to judge you, they're going to have some negative consequences around how they're treating you. That's something to take into account, but it shouldn't be the only thing, right? What you want also matters. So you can sort of weigh the pros and cons of Maybe I want to present in a certain way. Maybe I want to do a particular thing. Maybe I want to not do all this stuff, right? So feel free to explore, feel free to try different things because what you want matters. And that includes rest, right? Like just choosing to rest is something you can do that people will judge you for, but you can just make that choice. So chapter four is about your relationship with yourself. And here's what we'll start with. When you're feeling something, let that happen. There's a lot of conversation sometimes about, you know, feeling your feelings and what that even means. To me, what it means to feel, feel your feelings is that we're not distracting, we're not numbing those feelings, 
we're just open to them when they're coming up for us. We're like noticing these feelings um, because feeling, when, once we notice a feeling, we can allow that to move through us and then it's over. Whereas if we push a feeling down, try not to feel it, distract away from it, run away from that feeling, that feeling will stay in us waiting to be felt. And this can lead to chronic stress or health issues if we build all of these negative emotions up into our bodies, then those feelings are not going to go away until we feel them. So you can just feel your feelings. And feelings are not bad things. And they also don't dictate your actions. Feelings are a non-moral response to a situation that you're in. And so as you feel the feeling, your actions are not determined by that feeling, but you can use those feelings as one of several things you're considering when you're determining how to respond or react or to deal with a particular situation. The other thing I'll say to myself is, and to you, is keep a record of your life so that you will remember your experiences. And this is something I have done. Um, you know, collecting pictures, trinkets, little items, uh, journaling, um, taking, yeah, taking pictures. Um, because so much of my life experiences were things that I would notice and see, and that my experiences of those things were not being supported by the people I was around, is that I only can remember so many of those things if the world around me is not supporting my perspective of those things. And so I would end up forgetting a lot of things that had happened. And you know, many years later, I am now able to remember those things in part because of you know, pictures and journaling and all these different things that can help to like um, trigger memories. Um, but yeah, like being your own historian as a way to honor the truth of what you're experiencing when other people are trying to tell you that something is not true. Um, and the last piece I'll share in your relationship with yourself is to express yourself. And that can mean so many different things. Um, I just came up with a few means of self-expression, so some can be visual, whether that's visual art, self-expression, like in presentation, um, or, yeah, um, different forms of visual art. There's storytelling that can take the form of many different types of writing, um, acting, uh, making videos like this. Um, there's musical forms of self-expression via different kinds of, like, making music, different instruments, singing. There's movement, so, like, dancing and exercising and being on, like, a sports team. Right? So I think also cooking is another form of self-expression. So I, I think like it's so important to have a form of self-expression that we're able to express ourselves through because that is how we can understand ourselves is by, is by expressing ourselves and by sharing that with people and the world, but also just having that for ourselves, right? You don't necessarily need to share when you express yourself, but you can you know, can just make something. So, to summarize, you're not crazy. Those people in your life are fucked up. Your assessment is correct. You can be around people you want to be around and do things you want to do and not be around people you don't want to be around and don't do the things you don't want to do. What you want matters. Also, express yourself. Finally, what I'll say is trust yourself. Trust your experiences. Trust your perception of your experiences. Trust that there is value in your perspective and there is value in, you know, 
just you being who you are outside of anything that you produce or make. And trust the people who encourage this trust of yourself. Trust the people who are most supportive of you in choosing what you want, rather than the people who support what they want. Be suspicious of authority figures who discourage your trusting in yourself. Authority figures who simply tell and tell you what to do and don't allow you to ask any questions or push your questions aside. Be suspicious of peers who listen to these authority figures and enforce their will, their desire, when they're not around. Overall, trust yourself. And as you're coming to the end of this letter, I would like to invite you, if you've opened your eyes back up, to perhaps close your eyes once again. And you're holding this letter, and you are feeling it in your hands, and you feel on your toes soft sand and you feel the wind on your skin as it blows and it smells of the ocean. You hear the distant sounds of birds and of young people playing and you look up from the paper which you had just finished reading and you look out over the ocean out into the horizon and as you're doing this, you open yourself up to the feelings and the thoughts that are welling up within you as you've just finished reading this letter or watching the video. What is it that you're feeling at this time? What do you think about this letter that this person wrote to themselves? Is there anything that you would like to take for yourself from this letter? Hey, thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments. Special thanks to my patrons whose financial support enables me to continue making these videos. If you would like to become a Patreon, you can follow the link in the description or in the All My Links link on my YouTube profile. Also, if you'd like to explore me being your therapist and you live in the state of Pennsylvania, you can follow that same All My Links link to my therapy website. Say you're coming from YouTube, and I'll see you in the next video.